Are you looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. Hi, welcome to Make It Clear. I'm so glad you can join us today. My name is Stan Pons, and I'm the host of Make It Clear and the president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. I want you to know that our programs are designed really with you in mind. Our desire is to add value to your life by having you listen to the messages as well as to the preaching and the teaching that we have from time to time. Well, today is no different. We have a very special guest with us, an individual that I've been able to watch his ministry over literally decades, and from what God has been doing in his life and through his life, I have grown greatly in my knowledge of the Lord, his word, as well as in how to do ministry in a way that would bring great integrity to the Lord. You're probably wondering, who who is this uh, masked man that we're talking about? Well, it's none other than Dr. Dick Hill. Uh, Dick Hill has been one who has come to faith in Christ. God has educated him. He's been used in ministry, both music ministry, we'll hear a little bit more about that, as well as in the ministry of pastoring. So he comes not only with a theological foundation, but he comes with a shepherd's heart. He loves you even though he doesn't know you because he loves the Lord and he wants you to know the Lord. In fact, he's the kind of guy that's going to take you to the Lord and then he's going to bring the Lord to you and that together that you would have a deeper walk with him and perhaps even come to faith alone in Christ for your own salvation. So he's done music. He's been a pastor, but he is also an author. He has six books that are published. He has one now that he's finishing up. And so he's been used of the Lord in ways to have a legacy. So you can learn much from Dick Hill and what God has given to him. He's a conservative Bible teacher, one that you can really understand when he speaks, because he speaks with compassion, clarity, correctness, because he's accurate. He's very careful to know that when he teaches, he has to answer to the Lord for what he teaches. You can learn more about Dick Hill at his website, glimpsesofgrace.org. And if you're in a place where you can listen to this broadcast and also surf the web, you might want to go to glimpsesofgrace.org. So today, you're listening to Make It Clear. My name is Stan Pons, and our guest is Dick Hill. Dick, welcome to Make It Clear. Thank you, Stan. All right. You're hailing for from uh, Mississippi. Is that correct? I was born in Yazoo City, Mississippi. Well, you were born there. But tell us how and where you were born again. Tell us about that part of your story. I was attending Mississippi State University and singing in a rock and roll band. You have to take that by faith. <laughs> and we were we were playing a dance in Charleston, Mississippi, at the National Guard Armory there. And at the same time, they were having a revival at a little country church named Cowart Baptist Church, who was pastored by a country preacher named James Varner Clark, but we called him Nap. And Nap became famous at Boca Raton in many ways. But I went to uh, Sunday morning, they were having a service, and I was asked to sing one of the only gospel songs that I knew at that meeting. And I had, a, 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 I guess, a, a respect for preachers. Some call it a fear, but I tried to get out of that building without, a run, without running into Nap Clark. I tried to sneak out, and I almost made it. I was going down the steps, and I, I was breathing a little you know, freely, thinking I had, I had dodged him, but he put this big giant hand on my shoulder, and he turned me around. And that hand on the shoulder and that turning me around began to lead to a complete turnaround in my life. Because Nap Clark shared with me the gospel of grace. He did it through the hand gesture. And uh, he gave me the facts, the facts of the gospel, that I was a sinner. I knew that. And that God loved me. And he became a man. He took on flesh to come into the world and die for my sin. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, and he explained the gospel so clear, so plain to me, and he told me that I could receive the benefits of that precious work by simply trusting in Christ by faith. And he put those thoughts in my mind, and little did I know that he had planted a seed in my thinking. 
But that seed was not germinated until that summer when Knapp talked me into going to Boca Raton, Florida for a youth camp. That uh, that seed was germinated. I was walking by the old fish pond. I'm not sure if you remember the old fish pond at Boca. I was walking across the grass there by the fish pond. And God, the Holy Spirit, brought the words that Knapp had shared with me, the gospel, back into my thinking. And it was at that point that God germinated that seed, and I stopped, and I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Something like, God, I don't understand all this, but right now, the best I know how, I am trusting Jesus Christ to save me. And immediately, I knew he had saved me. I knew that life was different. I mean, it was the same beautiful Florida sky, but somehow it was bluer. And it was the same grass, that beautiful St. Augustine green grass, but somehow that grass was greener. And I knew my life had been changed at that moment, and I would never be the same. And that started my adventure in grace right there at that moment. Well, I'm telling you that if anybody that's listening right now, this may be their defining moment, even as they surf through the Internet and are hearing this, because just like Nat Clark shared the message with you after a church service, and then God took that seed of truth that was planted in your mind, and then you trusted Christ at Bible Town in Boca Raton so many years ago, it may be that someone right now realizes that they are lost or they're separated from you or or that they have a desire to know you, and even to have their sins forgiven and a home in heaven. They could do what you did so many years ago, place their faith in Christ for the full and free forgiveness of sin. Now, you talked about your life turning around. I know you didn't turn your life around to get saved, but you turned your life around because you were saved, and maybe as another way to say, thank you, Lord, for bestowing your forgiveness and grace and mercy on me, and you've given your life to the Lord. And soon afterwards, I understand that uh, you were uh, brought into the world of music, particularly Christian music as well. Tell us just briefly some of the uh, doors that the Lord opened up for you in Christian music to minister. While I was at Florida Bible College, I met a man named Mike Otto. He was a fellow student and another guy, Bruce Porter and Dave Shipley and and Don Smith, and they all became friends. And one day, just strangely, Mike, they needed um, they needed a strong tenor, a high voice tenor to kind of complete their uh, group called the Spokesman. And he asked me to go upstairs at the old Grove Church if I would be willing to sing with them, just to see how this thing would would develop. He wanted a, a sound kind of like the Letterman. He wanted he didn't want a quartet sound. He wanted sort of a soft, a uh, lot of harmony, a Letterman sound. So we went upstairs in that room, and that began, that day, that moment, began that group called the Spokesman. Now, they had had the Spokesman before, but not like this group. And Mike was amazed at our harmony. He was amazed at what we were able to accomplish in a short period of time. And that launched it. And then soon after that, uh, Dr. Stanford, the president of the school, uh, saw a possibility of starting some uh, meetings around the country at high schools and colleges using the spokesman as kind of the icebreakers. And then he coming along after that and sharing uh, the gospel. And he was quite a character, as you know. And he was able to relate some of his World War II bomber pilot stories in a way that he wove the gospel into that. And he was a man of humor and he was able to do that and but we set the stage as the singers we would come on and sing uh start out the meeting with speak out spokesman and that's how we started so many of those high school meetings and college meetings in fact for two years we flew all over the country doing those ministries and god gave us a window at that time to share jesus christ in the school systems now that's all been closed now 
But God gave us a great opportunity to share Christ. And it was an amazing, amazing experience. And those five guys, uh, we grew close together. Uh, we grew to love each other, special relationship. And I grew to, to really know Dr. Stanford. I would room with him, and he loved to sing. And it, late at night, it was kind of humorous. We would get the guitars out, and and uh, I would get a guitar. We'd sing some of the old country songs that he loved, the old country hymns, the old uh, songs that he grew up with, like I Saw the Light and and uh, things like that. We would sing until the, sometimes the wee hours of the morning, people would be beating on the walls at, <laughs> at, the, uh, at the hotel. Uh, we, he just didn't know when to quit. Uh, and, he sure loved the Lord, didn't he? And he loved having people. Here I, he, he was a, he's a special man to me. He, we, we related to each other uh, so much so that I got to know him in a very personal, deep way and vice versa. And, He's the first one who changed my name from Dickie J to Dick. Mm. And he told me, you need to be called Dick, not Dickie J. But I still answer to Dickie J. And when someone calls me that, it's a kind of a blast from my past. Uh, <laughs> who well, knew me back when. But anyway, we, we traveled all over the country. And we had people uh, taking notes for us back at the school. And keep, we kept up with our schoolwork. Mm -hmm. But that was the two years of just amazing, an amazing adventure and still love these guys dearly. Uh, we, we need to have one final, and I hope they listen to this interview, because we need to have one final meeting, get together, uh, this group, because we have so much that, that is so private to us that, that we know about each other and to share and we need to make that happen one more time. Get the old spokesmen together. Uh, Mike Otto, Bruce Porter, Don Smith, Dave Shipley. And Dave's health is really going down quickly. So if we're going to do this, we need to do it quickly. Amen to that. Now, as you traveled as a young man, and then you went off from Florida Bible College into other education and then into the ministry, I know that you still remember the great need that America has. And you saw that need, and from that need, it then was laid upon your heart to really emphasize the message of grace, so much so that you called your ministry Glimpses of Grace. Why did you call your ministry Glimpses of Grace? Boy, thanks for asking that question. Um, I found early on in my life, uh, uh, let me back up a little bit, Dallas Seminary changed my life because they emphasized this word by word, verse by verse study of scripture, getting into the text itself, and not so much developing sermons as teaching the text. But I soon discovered that God didn't tell me everything I wanted to know about any particular subject as I was studying a book. He just gave me little glimpses, little snippets of truth here and there. And it's as almost, if you think about Paul's, we look through a glass dimly. We're just seeing just, uh, just the tip of the iceberg of what's there. And, and we're catching some amazing truths that are in the Word of God, and they're just in little glimpse forms. We just catch a glimpse of this and a glimpse of that. And over the period of time, we begin to put these, these truths together. And in the process, a beautiful picture emerges of, of the gospel and God taking on flesh and coming into the world and the amazing truth that he had determined that he was going to pay our sin debt of death that we owed him. But, but there was a problem seemingly is God as God could not die. And so in order to, to die, he had to become a human being. And so he, he made this amazing transformation that first Christmas morning when God, the Holy Spirit, etched that tiny embryo to the womb of the Virgin Mary, and that gave us the Lord Jesus Christ, who was born into the world as the God-man. He was undiminished deity and perfect humanity in one body, and therefore he was able to take God by the hand and man by the hand and bring the two together. He's the perfect mediator, the Christ. 
And that was a tremendous glimpse that I saw early on. And, and uh, from that, I have studied book after book. And I found the value of the power of the gospel in changing lives. It's the power of the gospel that does it. It's not the power of the communicator. It's not the person that's giving the message. It's the message itself that is the power. And you can say it softly and you can say it loudly and you can even sing it. But it's the power of the message. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation. And that's what I discovered early. And and then I began to put glimpses together throughout the word. Things came together as far as the books are concerned and the doctrines of grace begin to uh, God began to show me those. And, but again, it was just little glimpses. It was, I was never really given everything I wanted to know about every given subject. He just gave me bits and pieces, but putting those bits and pieces together was the joy of it all. Because then you, the, the, the gigantic picture of grace began to emerge. And, and this is what's led to all the books and, and it's just been an amazing adventure in grace. And it all began with a word-by-word study. I, I found out that every word matters in the Word of God. There's not one wasted word there. God put every word there by His design, and it's meant to be known. It's meant to be known and understood. And all that's translated into one word, it's work. It's a lot of work to get into the text and to break it down. And and old Knapp used to say often, put the cookies down on the lower shelf so people can eat. And what he was meaning by that is make the Bible clear. And that's what you do so well, Stan. You make it clear. You make it understandable to people. And, you know, they have to understand the facts. And then they have to believe the facts to be true. And then ultimately, prayerfully, they place their faith in Jesus Christ and they're born of God. Exactly. Well, for those that have just tuned in, you're listening to the testimony of Dr. Richard Hill, known as Dick Hill. He's a songwriter. He's also a musician. He's one also that has pastored for many years. He's a Bible teacher. He's an author. And our subject today is grace, and particularly because his ministry is called Glimpses of Grace. And I'm glad you tuned in so that you could perhaps get another focus on the glimpses of grace. Now, Dick, tell us the titles of the books that you have out, because there may be those listening that are their interests are piqued to want to know, hmm, what is this? I'd like to know more about grace. And when you go through the titles, go through all of them, and then if they were to pick one out of that list, which one would be the one you'd encourage them to get first? All right? Tell us about those books. Thank you for that question. The first book that I penned was the first letter that Paul wrote a glimpse of Galatians, because he wanted to clarify the gospel, because there was a confusion facing uh, the church at that time as to what is the gospel. And there was a distortion. And Paul wrote the book to correct that distortion, to clarify the gospel. And, you know, he began with, I'm amazed that you are so soon removed from him who called you by his grace to another gospel, which is not another. And then he goes into the gospel uh, in the book of Galatians. And that would be a book that I would recommend that you get to clarify the gospel in your own mind and to be able to communicate it clearly. And then I began a series, a C series. Uh, the second book was a glimpse of the Christ and the what makes the cross so powerful. What makes uh, the, the work of the cross so powerful is the identity of the one who died there. I mean, if, it, if Jesus Christ was just a carpenter, if he was just a great teacher, a philosopher, then that cross work doesn't have a whole lot of meaning to us. But if he is truly the God man, if he is truly God who took on flesh and, and in his humanity, he died on that cross then that makes the worth of the cross extremely valuable. 
uh, because it was there that God paid our sin debt in in full because of his identity. So the, a glimpse of the Christ teaches us who Jesus Christ really is. And the second book, A Glimpse of the Christian, is all about the Christian life. And that has everything to do with the Holy Spirit. The first book uh, focused on Christ. The second book, the second C-series, spoken, uh, uh, focused on the Holy Spirit. And, and there was seven ministries I covered there in that book on the Holy Spirit. And they are the, the, a glimpse of regeneration, new life, a glimpse of the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit, that our bodies become the temple of the Holy Spirit the moment that we trust Christ. And the third is the sealing ministry. We are sealed forever in Christ in Ephesians chapter 1. And, and then there's the, the uh, equipping ministry of, uh, of the Holy Spirit that we're given what uh, Dr. R.B. Theme once called divine operating assets. The Bible calls them spiritual gifts with which to serve the body. We're all equipped to serve. We're saved to serve. And we're saved to have a ministry. And so the Holy Spirit equips us with these divine operating assets. And I I overlooked the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's in there also, where God, the Holy Spirit, places us amazingly into the body of Christ the moment we believe. We are immersed into him, placed into union with him. We become a part of his body. We are in Christ. And I think Paul used that phrase more than any other in describing our relationship to Christ. We're in him. We're in over and over again. He used it. Those who are in Christ, those who are in Christ. I'm reminded Ruth Paxson wrote a great book and she said, the word in is the littlest big word <laughs> in the Bible. Particularly That's right. the book of That's How right. about if we do this? We're about out of time and I want to give our listeners the opportunity to just hear the titles of the other books. Why don't okay. you finish that up? There? Okay. I got you. The second, the, the third one was a glimpse of the Christian and then a glimpse of the chosen, which gives my view of sovereignty and then a glimpse of the coming king, which it, that book is one of the uh, books that I've written. That's an easy read. My wife calls it a page turner. It's talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the kingdom. The The next book uh, is a glimpse of Romans, which is a complement book to a glimpse of Galatians. They're the two doctrinal books that I wrote, Galatians and Romans. Mm-hmm. And And those are the books now that I have published, and they're available on Amazon. You can go there, and they're all available on Kindle. You can get them through Kindle. They're they're very inexpensive on Kindle. If you have a Kindle reader or a way to download those books, you you can purchase those books from Amazon and Kindle. And then I'm working now on regeneration, and hopefully I will have it done in the next few months. My wife is pushing me hard. Well, I know that in you, you're, when, when a person is so filled with the fullness of God and they allow the Lord to really do this, then you have books. Now, we're not saying that your books are divinely inspired, but we are saying it's the mind of Christ that you have and you want others to know it. I really encourage you to go to Dick Hill's website. It's called glimpsesofgrace.org. That's glimpsesofgrace.org. He's got a plethora of information for you from books to booklets to music other information. In fact, you could even get on his list so that as new information comes out, he can get that to you. And again, it's not so much that we're promoting Dick Hill as much as we want you to know that he has become a vehicle to bring this information to you on grace. So again, that's glimpsesofgrace.org to get that information. And Dick, I've known you for decades and you have always been faithful. You've been consistent. You've been compassionate. And one thing that stands out most is your desire to love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and mind. And because you love him, you love others, and you love them so much that you want them to know truth. So I just want to thank you for being with us today. And we look forward to future opportunities to interview you because I want to unpack what is grace. Everybody wants to reduce God's riches at Christ's expense. But I know that that's just so tiny compared to the whole concept of grace. And I want you to open that up for us. So, Dick, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Stan. And thank you, John, for your help.
All right. God bless all of you. And I want you to know that uh, we're going to be back again with you with more truths from God's word so that you can share it with others and make it clear. This is Stan Pons. Thank you for being with us. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us Make It Clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.